Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Yesterday, Ubiquiti released Unify Network Application 8.1.113. This is still in release candidate, so if you want to get it, you need to go over to your Unify OS and then change the release to release candidate and then press apply changes. With release candidate, they still can pull this back into early access, so you need to be careful about that, but usually it is pretty stable and this is a fairly big update. So if we scroll down, you can see they have added a ton of different things which we're going to go over i'm not going to read the release notes but if you want to see the notes i'll put a link down below now if you'd like to support my channel i do now have ubiquity affiliate links that i'll also put in the description if you'd like to hire me for network consulting visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com and we do have a discord server now let's jump right into this update now the first thing that we're going to look at is this new network viewer if you look over on the left hand side it will show us our networks and we could see the viewer and then and inspection all inspection is is it's showing us our threat blocks our ad blocks and traffic rules enforced which we previously had before but if we go back to viewer we could see a couple new things we first have this ai detections so i purposely made a loop in my network just to see if this would work and you can see that my pro max switch on port 23 is being blocked by spanning tree protocol and it will be automatically re-enabled when the loop is no longer detected so i do like that they added that feature right into the network viewer now below the ai detections we could see everything that we have configured within our network so we have our wi-fi networks which you could see i have four ssids we could always configure which will bring us to the wi-fi network page or we could hide this column altogether. Below that, we have our networks that are configured. So every single VLAN, and you'll be able to see the VLAN ID, the least IPs, and the usable IPs. Now, if we keep scrolling down, it's gonna show us our internet. And right now, I only have one WAN connection plugged in, but it will show us the IP, it will show us the VLAN ID if there is one, the port that it's on, the uptime, and the utilization as well as latency. We have 12 milliseconds latency. This is a copper connection. Next up is our VPN servers and what we have configured. I only have the one wire guard configured, so that's all you see, as well as site to site, there's nothing there. And then we have the VPN client. The VPN client that I'm using is OpenVPN and it's just connecting out to my NordVPN. But if we did have other things like policy-based routing and port forwarding, it would all show up here. So this really gives us a quick overview of our networks just by looking at this one page. Now, the one thing that I will have to read off this page is for the NAT pooling. As I don't have a block of IPs, I won't be able to show you here. So it adds the ability to NAT traffic to a pool of addresses on specific networks. So if you have multiple IPs, you'll be able to tell it where to go. So configure NAT pool using the internet source slash NAT option on the virtual networks. And you'll see that there's this internet source slash NAT. This will only show up if you have multiple IPs. So if we close this down, they also say this option will appear when additional IPs are configured on your WAN. So if we go back to my UDMSE, you can see that I don't have that option here because I don't have multiple IPs. They also say that there's gonna be an addition of custom source and destination NAT rules in scheduled upcoming releases, so watch out for that. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is the access list for our layer three switches. Ubiquity has finally brought this to the GUI. You used to be able to do it through the command line, but if your switch did a reboot, all the access lists would disappear as it was saved in memory. So I'm really glad that they've added this feature, even though we can't do a whole ton with it yet besides isolate a few networks so what you can see here though we have our router and it's all showing the mac telecom se so on this youtube test what we're going to do we're going to click and go to the router hit the drop down and this is where i have all my layer 3 switches for the YouTube test, we're just gonna put it on the Pro Max 24 PoE. You can see here that it comes up with the pop-up saying layer three network migration. Are you sure you wanna to change to this router to this network of this switch? Client devices connected may temporarily lose their internet connection and IPv6 configuration will be removed from this network and we'll press confirm. Once we press confirm, this new network is created and this is for our inner VLAN routing and that's what it's called. And it has VLAN ID of 4040. Now, before we do the layer three isolation, I I want to show you that I could still hit my Synology NAS. I turned all the blocking firewall rules off to make sure this works, but I am sitting on that YouTube test network. And if we go ping 192.168.10.220, we will be able to go through. Now let's go back into the YouTube test network. And if we scroll down, we could see isolate network ACL. So this is gonna to isolate to the IPv4 subnet 
from all other virtual networks. This doesn't give us any options to just do a couple selections to block, but we can do that as well, and I'll show you after. But first, we're going to hit this check off, and then we're going to press Apply Changes. Now let's bring up a command line again and try that. So I'm going to go ping 192.168.10.220. And we could see that the request will be timed out. So those access lists are working from isolating us to any other network. But say we didn't want it to block every single network out. We just wanted it to select few. Well, we could also do that. I'm going to go back to the YouTube test and uncheck this and then press apply changes. So now that access list will be gone and we have access to everything. But if we just want to do custom ones, we could just look under our network and scroll down. Here we could see layer three network isolation ACL. And if we check this off, we're going to be able to create an entry. So we could see what network we want to have as our source, which will be the YouTube test network. And then the destinations that we want to block it from going to. So I'm just going to say the default network because that's where the Synology NAS is sitting. And we'll see if we could hit something else on one of these other networks. So we'll press create. Now with that new access list created saying that the YouTube test network can't reach default, we still shouldn't be able to hit the 192.168.10.220 and we still can't do that, but we should be able to access any other network. So I'm just gonna ping this Google mini nest on the top. We'll go ping 192.168.100.110 and press enter. And we could see that the ICMP messages are being returned to us. And this is working how it should. Now, another thing that's new that we could do right under the networks instead of creating firewall rules is to allow network access. We can't do this on the layer three switch. So we need to drop down that and put it back to my Mac Telecom SE. You could see here we have allow internet access. So if you have a subnet that you don't want going out to the internet, we would just uncheck this. For now, I'm going to press apply changes. Make sure we could still get out to the internet. Then we'll turn this off to make sure that we're getting blocked. So I brought up a command prompt and we're going to ping 1.1.1.1. And you can see that that's going through. Now let's go back to that YouTube test network and we're gonna turn internet access off and apply the changes. Now, if we bring up a command prompt again, we shouldn't be able to ping Google or any site like that. And you could see on the Unify dashboard, it says network is offline. So let's ping google.ca. And you can see that it's not even finding DNS. If I ping 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, we're not getting through on that as well. So any subnet that you don't want to go on the internet, it's just one checkbox instead of making firewall rules. Now this next one is a small change, but I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. And that's the ability to be able to turn the topology view. This is the normal standard view that we used to have. So it goes from left to right, but now we could do up and down. So all we need to click is this button up top on the left and it's going to change our topology which to me is a lot easier to read than going from left to right. Now we're going from the top down to the bottom to see all of our clients and our switches. I'm really glad that they added this in and I think people will be happy about it as well. Now the next one we're gonna do a full video on but I'll show you where you could find it and that's OSPF dynamic routing. So if we go under our settings and then we go over to routing, we're gonna see it right here, OSPF. They finally did add it in. And the next one to come is BGP, which they are working on. But if we want to add OSPF, we could do everything here and there will be a full video. So watch out for that. Now let's quickly take a look at our firewall rules. So if we go over security and then traffic and firewall, they've changed it a little bit. So we have our simple, which means that this is our traffic rules. And then we have our advanced, which is our firewall rules. They have changed the design of this quite a bit. At the top, you could see this allow established and related and the icon is a wall. So that means that it's a firewall rule. If we look and we see this little icon that looks like a traffic light, that means that it's a traffic rule, which is really great that they brought that in. On the right hand side, we could see all these different IDs. So these are firewall IDs. Now, another great change to the firewall rule list is the tooltip. So I created a profile for the RFC 1918 group of IPv4 addresses. You could see that we have this I icon and when we hover over it, it's showing us everything that it's in that group. So it's all our RFC 1918 addresses. If we scroll down, we could see I made another run called VPN users and we go over top of it and it will show us that subnet or the ports that you put into it. So it's really great to have a quick glance 
at what was being done on that firewall rule. Now, again, I'm probably going to have to make another full build video as they've changed quite a bit. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see. Now, the next things that we go over are just minor changes that they've made. We've already talked about all the major changes, but one is to have side tabs. So when we click on our switches right now, it just goes and it picks which switch we have. But we could turn on tabbing so that we could see or go back to our previous network device. So how you do that, you click on settings, go to system, and then we go over to advance. We have this side panels tab and we could click that on and press apply changes. Now going back to our devices, if we click on one switch and then we go to the other, you could see that they're tabbed up top, which makes it easier to change between the two. Now the last thing that we're gonna talk about in this video is if you have a Pro Max switch. So clicking on the Pro Max switch and then going over to the settings, we now have this option to do breathing mode. So breathing mode is the standard that it came with. So you can see in this video here that the lights go on and then they go off and on and off. And that was bugging some people. So now you could turn it off and they're just going to stay a steady LED as shown here. Now that was a ton of things to go over and there's even more in this release. So go make sure you read the release change notes. I'm really glad they finally added access list within the GUI. We've been waiting for that for a very, very long time. Let me know what else you'd like to see down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.